Um, I live in the Brighton Air Theater on Riverside, on Yellowstone and Nelson Street. Uh, okay, close right now. Unfortunately, I work as an aeropilot, uh, so I'm not in town very much. And, uh, anyway, um, I'm interested with the, uh, the whole okay, situation. Okay, uh, The Shell Park up down the street, that's uh, become quite a hangout for the uh, homeless. We can't hear what you're saying. I, I can read. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it. I'll, 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 if you uh, just give me a, a little time, I'll rephrase the question for everyone. Thank yeah, you. I, I, I'm off for two weeks, and I'm just amazed at what I'm seeing in the neighborhood. Being at home, um, with the shopping carts, and the homeless situation, and the drug addicts, and uh, everything else is going on. So I'm just curious what you propose for uh, alleviating the situation. So, for those who couldn't hear Mr. Jones, thank you for your question. Uh, Mr. Jones asked the question of what is your plan? Uh, he lives near Shamble Park. Um, he's an airline pilot, so he is uh, home uh, a couple days, and then he's gone for a week or so, and he comes back. Uh, and he is sees a lot of homeless in Shamble Park, drug use, uh, and then wants to know what our plan is to come back. Is that, do we, is, that, is that good? Okay. So, thank you again for asking the question. From the very beginning, I came up with a homeless action plan. We currently do things where, where we just try and get the same solution for everybody affected by homelessness. The answer for some people, right, the people that want to be helped, is a plan of housing first, giving them compassion, giving them help. Those are the people that, have, that want to be back to self-sufficiency. We have another group, mentally ill. Unfortunately, they don't know where they where they are, how to get help, where to go for help. We have to engage with them different. I'm answering fast because I only have a little bit of time. The last group is the vagrant population, the drug dealers, the people that are using the parts and not allowing you, as a taxpayer, to use your park, Mr. Jones. Those of you who want to go to the park to take your kids, your grandkids, and you have needles in the park, you have feces on the sidewalk. That's not okay. And we have to do more as a city to enforce that. We tolerate way too much as a city currently because we don't want to worry about a lawsuit. We don't want to worry about anything else. I also want to thank you for that question. As uh, someone who was born and raised here who learned how to swim at Shamble Park, I am equally concerned about the condition of our parks, specifically Shamble Park, which is the park that I grew up down the street from. It's important to distinguish the difference between homelessness and crimes. A crime is a crime regardless of who commits it. And there is no prosecutorial discretion when it comes to that. When a homeless criminal goes into the court system, he's treated no differently than if Mr. Avery or myself committed a crime. And that's the way it should be. There is a zero tolerance policy when it comes to crime. We punish criminals. But when it comes to dealing with the issue of homelessness, Housing first is the most effective way of solving it. And only once homeless people have stable housing can they address the complex issues we discuss, mental health, drug addiction. And it's my time on the board of Path of Life Ministries that has given me the experience to be able to tackle this issue, to get government resources, and to get government agencies to work together with them. Thank you. Rebuttal, Mr. Rager? Yes, please. So I appreciate Mr. Giro joining Path of Life Ministries, but the fact is, the efforts have failed. They have gone, homeless numbers have gone up year over year, 20% at least year over year. Those efforts have failed. We have to do something different. And a crime is a crime, but the problem is we don't enforce those. The law, the police, they will turn their back or just turn a blind eye a lot of times because they're worried the person's not gonna go into a jail. They're not going to be prosecuted. I agree, once they get into a court, absolutely, but that doesn't happen. All right, thank you.